Hi, I'm Ryan of Midnight Solar. Today I want to talk to you about SPDs, surge protection devices. I want to talk to you about best practice, where to use them, what the different models mean to you, and I'm going to lightly touch on the actual capability of the models. Uh, we have an SPD-115, we have an SPD-300, and we have an SPD-600. The SPD-115 is primarily intended for low voltage stuff. Um, say you've got a low voltage control circuit, AC circuit, 24, 48 volts, it's great for those. Uh, you got a low voltage DC item, say you've got an old Trace C40 charge controller running low voltage. It's great to go on the input of one of those. It's also really good for 12, 24, 48 volt battery banks. SPD 300 is good for DC inputs to MPPT charge controllers. It's also good for 120, 240 AC regular residential AC. I'll talk more about that a little later. The SPD 600 is primarily meant for grid tie inverters, 0 to 600 volt DC in. Also good for 480 three phase AC power. If you have a uh, residence or a building that has industrial power, three phase power, 480 volts, you can use a couple of those to protect the, free, the three phase. Okay, I'm going to go back to the 300. First thing I want to mention is these are not just for solar systems. They're not just renewable energy. Uh, anybody connected to a power grid anywhere is susceptible to surges any day of the week. Could be a nearby lightning strike. It could be a squirrel in the substation. Could be a solar flare. Doesn't really matter. Those power lines are huge antennas and most of the damage in a dwelling is done by surges coming in from a nearby lightning strike or something like I mentioned. 99% um, of the damage I would say is caused by something coming in the power line, not by a direct strike to your house from lightning. So if you've got a, if you've got a residence, it has utility power, you owe it, to, you owe it to yourself to have some surge protection on the utility panel. It wants to be as close to the utility feed as possible, top of the main panel or outside on the meter socket, wherever is convenient for your electrician but it does want to be near the top of the electrical panel. And the reason for that is your utility feed comes into the top of the panel and you've got a row of breakers on bus bars. If you put this at the bottom of the panel, those bus bars have some resistance to them. And when a surge comes in, it has to get all the way down to this before it can clamp it. So everything in the middle can be affected slightly. So therefore you want this at the top to catch it right away. Put the brakes on as soon as you can. Um, that's, that's what I'm going to say on the 12240 subject. Like I say, I do recommend them. Every residence, anybody connected to utility owes it themselves to protect their equipment. I want to talk a little bit about the SPD itself, and then I want to talk about where you'd use them. The SPD has two channels, a red and a black wire. Each one is an independent protected channel. Each channel references to the green wire, which is earth ground. So in a surge, it comes in on the red, it clamps it to a safe voltage, and it shunts it to the ground. The SPD also has a NEMA 4X case. It will come sealed from the factory. We have this one open for the video. NEMA 4X rated for outside. Sets us apart from a lot of the competition as we are rated for outside. So your visual indication of readiness, the bright blue LEDs, as you see down here in the video, can be seen. These mount on the outside of combiner boxes, on your meter socket, disconnects on wind turbine towers, virtually anywhere you need protection you can find a way to mount these and uh, that way you can see the visual indication. If this is on your combiner box on your roof, that blue light is very visible, you'll know you're protected. If it's inside the combiner box, the lid is closed, you have no idea whether it's good or bad without going up and opening the combiner box and checking it on a regular basis and that's just not going to happen. So having them outside definitely worth the time and the effort. Four MOVs per channel, um, very robust, strong MOVs. We put four per channel, probably one of the strongest you'll find on the market. Um, definitely look at our spec sheet, look at our clamping powers, our, you know, the amperage we can handle, compare it to who you're looking at, compare it to the competition, I think you'll find we're one of the strongest available. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back together and I'm gonna briefly explain our cut-in box. Our cut-in box comes with a piece of flexible conduit and everything you need. And what this is intended for is a residential setting where you may want to add this to your AC electrical panel, but your panel is recessed into a drywall or a wooden wall or whatever the case may be. You can take this box, you cut your hole in the drywall, this box fits in, 
You wire it to your panel with the flexible conduit. Makes a nice, neat, clean installation. Still gives you the uh, access to the visual indication of, you know, goodness on your SPD. And uh, going back to the, the indication, the blue LED indicators, as we've seen down here, when the SPD is hit, when it is expired, when the MOZ, MOVs are finally used up, the LED will go out indicating it has failed. Upon failure, you will just need to contact us. They do come with a five-year warranty. We will repair it or replace it, whichever is needed. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the blue LED and the wires. The, when used in a 12240 case, like on a residential service entrance, both LEDs will be on all the time. When used in a DC environment, a charge controller, for instance, coming into a charge controller, we're putting the red on the positive, the black on the negative, and the green to earth ground. The most modern PV systems have ground fault protection, and what this does is it references the negative to earth ground. So there's two things I want to mention here. By referencing it to earth ground, we lose the blue LED indicator on the negative. It will not be on because it's at the same potential as earth ground. Does not mean it's not protected, you just don't have the indicator. You will have the indicator on positive, and that will let you know if it's good or bad. The other thing I want to mention too, on the modern system with ground fault protection, that's why we recommend using negative and positive into the charge controller because that ground fault protection is typically a half amp to one amp breaker or fuse. Now a nearby lightning strike or a hard surge is going to break that fuse leaving a negative conductor wide open and to your charge controller or inverter that would be unprotected otherwise. So therefore we do recommend one of these on every DC input into your system be it charge controllers or inverters. If you have an Aurora Power 1 inverter, for instance, that has two MPPD channels, you need a pair of 600s, you need one on each input. If you've got a stack of four classics, you need four SPDs, one on each input. Um, that covers the DC input for your charging. I want to talk about AC. You've got an inverter system, you've got an Outback FX inverter or you know the, the G grid tide series, whatever the case may be. It's going to have an AC in and an AC out. We use one SPD, AC in, AC out, Keller doesn't matter. You can pick whichever way you want that. Um, now let's say you've got a Radian or a Magnum 12240 PAE inverter. We want to use two of these, one for AC in and one for AC out. Uh, want to use them there. The other thing I want to talk about is wind turbines. You've got a wind turbine tower, um, it's a ways away. You want to put these at the base of the tower and then you want to put them in the building as well to protect the electronics. On a wind turbine application, you will notice in low winds, the lights will flicker. And that flickering is the frequency of the turbine. The frequency is so low, it's a pulse of electricity which makes those light flicker. That's perfectly normal, nothing to worry about. Three phase turbine, we use a pair of these. Um, just double up two wires on one of the phases do a wire for the other two phases. We do have wiring diagrams available on our website as well as in the manual with the SPD. Uh, please consult that for that. The other thing I want to talk about is wire distance. Um, things usually get overlooked is the distance of the wire. You've got a hundred feet of wire running the ground from the, you know, the garage to the house for instance. That, in, that wire is a great antenna. It's going to pick up a surge from a nearby lightning strike. So in that case, you know, people often forget the other end of the wire. We've got SPDs here in the shop on the power system. We've got 100 feet of wire running into the house. Um, the other end often gets forgotten. It, it's assumed that it's protected. And then what happens is you get a nearby lightning strike, which uh, you know, induces voltage into that line and it goes both ways. It gets out here, it's, it's, it's good. It, it's an SPD, it stops it. It gets into the house, there's no resistance. It goes right into all your components. So anything over 100 feet long, I highly recommend protection on each end of the wire, unless there's nothing on that end of the wire worth protecting. Uh, maybe that wire goes out to your barn, for instance, and the only thing in the barn is a couple fluorescent lights, and uh, you know that may be it. Um, then it doesn't need to be protected. Now, but now you put a chest freezer in the barn, maybe you want protection out there. So again, 100 feet of wire or more, I recommend protection on both ends. Till next time, I'm Ryan with Midnight.